So here we have Oman, which borders with the Yemen and Saudi. I'm particularly interested for the current project in Dofar province of Oman. Now the Dofar mountains rise from the sea by 1,000 meters within their first three kilometers. It's a steep rise and it creates a, a microclimate of cloud forest and a monsoon season. It's in sharp contrast to the big desert region of the Rubal Kali. This is the empty quarter. There's about 2,000 miles of desert and gravel flats between here and the cities of Saudi Arabia. I decided not to go asking questions because nobody will speak English in there anyway. I had a look, it's mostly a military compound, probably some government buildings. And, uh, and I guess most interestingly is that it has a, an oasis in it. Ali and Ethan and I have just driven up to the top of a dune and tilted right over with wheels now almost balanced in the air so we've just I'm underneath the car right now because we're going to dig out a big gap trying to get the wheels back down. Did they call it in English? Cemetery. Cemetery. This is cemetery. Okay. Is it their cemetery? Okay. Has this been a cemetery for a long time? No. This is for a long time and no one now in beyond here. We drove around on a on a rough track up to the plateau on the north side of this canyon here. And we spent the night and went in overland seeing what kind of wildlife is in there. And just as we leave the canyon, I'm going to be going past some industrial land which are a clear sign that this this kind of a this kind of a setting could easily be compromised and threatened by overgrazing by oil and gas exploration by habitation by quarry having a look right now at the way the, the Dofar range transitions between the coastal environment and the arid inland plateau environment. This Wadi Sake or Khor Kafut. I wanted to come to this part of the Gulf of Aden because I wanted to see the kind of environment that we might be bringing our students to next year for field studies in a number of subjects. Most importantly, they can come in here to study Arabian leopard and be involved in habitat protection. Something I love about the sandy conditions of this area is that any animal that moves through these little tracks is going to leave its trail and it'll be there for days to come. Just this morning as I've been following this little path through this area of graves, I've noticed that there are leopard tracks going ahead of me. I'm making my way through some fairly dense brush here. And then just a few minutes ago, I come across what's clearly a path. And it's interesting to see this uh, because this rock is normally very sharp, very uh, sort of edgy. And then what I find here is not only a, a clear opening in the brush, but also some very well worn away rocks, which tell me that someone, whoever lived here, had a good reason to be going up and down the sides of the valley. As I make my way along the coast, 
I've been trying to climb up along the sides of the escarpment to see if any of these um, cavities had any, anything inside of them. Now this one is the most remarkable so far. It's clearly uh, an, an ancient dwelling. I'm not sure just how long back, but uh, obviously long enough that nobody locally has any awareness of settlement here. Uh, the first thing on our left here is a kind of uh, livestock coop. It's collapsed, but looking closely at it, it has a wall structure and a, and a collapsed ceiling structure. Now, there's the entrance right there. It's only about uh, 40 centimeters high, probably for, uh, for some kind of uh, bird. And another one here, similar, more like a dome structure. Again, it's more in, it's only about 30 centimeters at the entrance, but it's much more intact. And now this is obviously the, the dwelling. And my guess is that these piles of branches would have, uh, in their day, gone right up to the, uh, to the upper half of the, of the cavern, uh, sealing in this area. I'm now in the uh, back end of the, of the cave. It's still open to the elements here. But I'm noticing little features of this environment as I have a closer look around. These boulders here caught my eye. I thought this might be some kind of a cooking area because it's deliberately been prepared to create a raised surface. And then I noticed that it's all ashen above. So this is now the highest of the caves I've been to. And what's really interesting to notice up here is that these sticks, which I still have yet to explain, there's so many of them. And I'm starting to think that there was some kind of a lantern hanging system. I've been on the move for seven days now, and this afternoon I'm hoping to reach the village of uh, Rakut, which is uh, maybe another 10 or 15 kilometers around uh, into the next bay. I wanted to show how simple it is to pack light for this kind of environment. The hat a uh, long sleeve shirt and light loose trousers. I haven't used any sunblock yet in seven days. I just basically keep covered up all the time and I swim uh, early and early in the day and late in the day. A pot, that's my whole cooking kit and, um, and a, a couple of lighters. Got a little bag of lightweight food, a water supply. I've actually brought several of these and had to drop them off along the coast. Good pair of uh, tall boots, really, really good. Good pair of socks, I just keep them clean and dry every day. It's GPS, not so much for myself, but for anybody who comes here after. I take uh, waypoints for freshwater springs, archeological sites, things like that. Got a few maps, which I also mark up using a notebook. And then uh, I've got a, a knife with lots of tools, which gets a lot of use. The, the cliffs hang over us on, the, on either side of the wadi. And where we get a little palm grove here, there's a nice shaded, sandy area. You could easily fit 10 to 20 people all camped out in one of these. I spent most of the day looking all around the wadi for any signs of uh, settlement here. And uh, this is the best one I've found so far. It's actually on the edge of an irrigation trough that I've been following through just some sort of scrubby woodlands here. So this is now about the 10th potential archaeological site for us to map out and determine what this valley might have looked like 400 years ago. Two nights left and uh, tonight I've got a little ledge here just uh, above a cove. I actually found that the, the water comes right up to the cliffs below so uh, I looked for somewhere just I could make out a little bed and uh, I've actually set three little little fires around me. I've seen four snakes so far this trip and uh, one of them was in just a place like this. Well I can't say I slept at all well last night but this is a pretty good situation to wake up to. <laughs> this is where our uh, hike north just eventually leads us into the into the sandy plains and the uh, desert of the empty quarter. Okay, so that's uh, the main part of the job done, and I'm now 1100 kilometers north to Muscat. I'm going to see if I can do it all today.